Continental Marshals May 13, 2020 by Anna Von Reitz. Henry Kissinger once said, and I quote, military men are damned stupid animals. I want you all to help prove him wrong. I am getting calls from all over this country from good men who want to serve as Continental Marshals. They are, universally, confused. Most of them want to serve as marshals because it is the only such service they've heard about, or because it sounds more impressive than being a county deputy or a member of their state militia. In the vast majority of the cases, these men are not being educated about the options, and therefore, aren't being profitably employed by the state assemblies, which is where they need to be serving. Let's begin with the fact that once an actual county sheriff is elected, he is the highest peacekeeping official in the nation, within the borders of that county, he is the personification of the public law. Period. So in terms of power, our elected sheriffs, working in an unincorporated capacity, often without pay, outrank every other peacekeeping officer, including continental marshals and federal agents of all kinds. He vastly outranks any private corporation's law enforcement officers. Thus, the raw power of our law enforcement capability is vested in our sheriffs and most of these men should be concentrating on organizing the declared Americans in their counties and becoming either sheriffs or sheriff's deputies, working close to home to protect their own families and neighbors. We have loyal Leos who have been elected by an unwittingly foreign population of U.S. citizens, men who still obey the constitutions, and we need to interface and work with them on an ever-increasing basis, to bring both ends back to the middle. There is no more important or higher role than the role of a local sheriff and his local deputies when it comes to enforcing and upholding the actual public law of this country, or the constitutions, either. The fundamental problem is that law enforcement officers Leos are by definition working as Pinkertons for foreign corporations, and they are enforcing equally foreign statutory law on people who have been presumed to be part of a foreign population. 90% of the presumed foreign population are Americans who have been deliberately misidentified as foreigners in their own country. Those Americans need to be fully informed about their choices, but in the meantime, the Leos need to be fully informed about this whole situation, too. Thanks to Mac v. Prins, these men are allowed to enforce the constitutions, but not required to. The Internet this week covered the story of a good cop who stood up against the culture of evil in the local police force, and got fired. He should be working for us, not them, on a local level. It is our job as Americans to make sure this all gets sorted out, to make sure the Leos understand the capacity they are operating in as private security agents, also working with the constitutional corporate sheriffs, and getting our own organizations together on the local level. People are crying out for the enforcement of the public law, for basic decency to prevail, and for their government to protect them. This happens first and foremost at the local level of the elected, unincorporated peacekeeping official known as the county sheriff. In terms of local power, the next men in line are the sheriff's deputies, who can be sworn in from the general population of Americans in each county, just like in the old John Wayne movies. It does not happen at the level of the Continental Marshals, and most of these recruits should be focused much closer to home. The state militia is tasked to protect the borders and interests of the state, and yes, we call it a state militia, not a state defense force or any other new label. Remember that when names change, so may the meanings. You will find no references to state defense forces in the constitutions, but you will find reference to our well-regulated militia. While county sheriffs and deputies are meant to provide enforcement of the public law and protect people in their homes and communities locally, state militias are called upon in times of disaster and their fundamental role is to work out a defense plan for their state, to protect its borders, assets, and people from external harm. Here's where you get border patrols, here's where you get soup kitchens and latrines when wildfires strike, here's where you get average men booted up and working together to enforce the public law and the constitutions on the public roads and thoroughfares. The public law in this country is the Ten Commandments and the constitutions dictate our relationship with the federales, what we owe them and what they owe us. It really is simple enough so that anyone can be trained to enforce the public law and understand the limits of the federal government in a day, once you get down to it. So this is about getting down to it, funneling these recruits into doing what most of them really want to do, protect their local communities, families, and neighbors, and stop all the confusion about the Continental Marshals Service.
Just as the sheriffs and their deputies protect their counties and the state militias protect their states, the Continental Marshals protect the international land jurisdiction of the country as a whole. What does that mean? Well, what is the land? The land is everything below six inches of the soil surface. Think about that. It's everything that underlies everything else. It forms a vast seamless substrate underneath everything else, including the oceans. This is an international realm and it is under international law. International law comes in two flavors, land and sea. Continental marshals stand on the land, and their brethren, the U.S. marshals float on the sea. The first and fundamental job of the original federal marshals, a term that encompassed functionaries operating in both jurisdictions, land and sea, was to protect the post offices. Our post offices. Most of our post offices were closed at the end of the Civil War, and only a few have straggled on with individual people serving as postmasters on the land. See the difference? Postmasters land versus postmasters sea. We have our own post offices, which are slowly reopening under the civil peace flag of the United States of America. One of the chief duties of Continental Marshals is to protect our postmasters and our post offices. For more insight, go to abodia.com. I can see most of you scratching your heads. What? That's not quite the glamour job you had in mind? Being a Continental Marshal requires understanding postal law and enforcement of international law in general. It requires understanding which powers were retained under Amendment X in the international jurisdiction of the sea, and it requires being able to walk a thin line between international land and sea jurisdictions and interact appropriately with the U.S. territorial marshals who are tasked with protecting the U.S. Postal Service USPS and United States Post Offices. This position naturally involves intercepting contraband being shipped and smuggled across state lines and stopping human trafficking, working with the U.S. Marshals to prevent illegal transport of alcohol, tobacco and firearms, apprehending illegal aliens who are engaged in criminal activities, and working with the constitutional sheriffs and state militia leaders when violations of constitutional guarantees occur, for example, when federal agents do things like they did when they ambushed Lavoie Finicum and murdered him in broad daylight in America. Lavoy hadn't formally declared himself as an American state national or as an American state citizen, so these bastards thought they had the right to set up a military-style ambush and kill him. And they got away with it by presuming him to be an enemy combatant in a war that ended in 1865. Think about that. It's tripe, but they use it to excuse their vicious and lawless actions, such as Waco and Ruby Ridge. This is also what they used to railroad the Colorado Nine and countless others. I say this to underline the life and death importance of the 1779 Declaration for every American, and especially all those engaged in peacekeeping or law enforcement activities at any level, and the equal necessity of recording and publishing it in public, hopefully with your own state recording secretary. We are a separate population, non-domestic with respect to the territories and possessions, non-domestic with respect to the municipal government authorized by the constitutions. We are not federales, but until we make this clear and official on the public record, they will continue to presume that we are one species of federal citizen or another, and we will be caught in their crossfire, because the two kinds of federal citizen are still pretending to be at war with each other and are being directed by the Pope and his minion in this matter, the Queen, to continue this farce on our shores. It behooves every American to stop whatever they are doing and realize the primal importance of bringing this war between our federal public servants, and their secretive collusion against us, to an end. It is especially important for anyone in any form of law enforcement to clearly grasp the overall situation and its implications. I have given you the broad outline of the various peacekeeping functions that need to be filled and I trust that it is now apparent that being a Continental Marshal is not what most recruits need to be, want to be, or can be. It should also be apparent that there is only one, one valid Continental Marshal's service and it is uniquely vested under the authority of the United States of America, our Federation of Unincorporated States. Nobody can run off and claim to be a Continental Marshal much less a Chief Continental Marshal without training and an official commission, badge, and ID issued by us. Period. This is for your safety and ours. The Continental Marshal's service which we commissioned on May 22, 2015, is a public service. 
It cannot be copyrighted by, owned by, or defined as any kind of incorporated entity at all, it exists under sovereign patent, trademark, and copyright as an instrumentality of the states of the Union. Anything that is incorporated and calling itself the Continental Marshals Service is infringing upon our prior sovereign patent, trademark, and copyright, in exactly the same way as the Scottish interloper did in 1868, and with the same effect, fraud. Anyone who is charging around calling themselves a Continental Marshal without having the specific training, commission, badge, and ID issued directly by the United States of America, is impersonating a Continental Marshal and should be stopped. I have on my desk a thing purporting to be issued as the official Continental Marshal's Oath that is being distributed under the equally purported authority of the General Post Office. The United States of America has not issued nor authorized any such oath and does not recognize any such General Post Office. Like many other such oaths and offices created by patriots acting out of school, it seems to have good intentions, but no lawful or legal authority, and is, in essence, a passport to jail on the same train that carried the Colorado Nine away. There are numerous organizations out there that have various stories about who and what they are, pretending to represent this country in some capacity or other. Without exception, their leaders have spent time in federal jail. This current example appears to come from Reign of Heaven Society. Its leader, Keith Living Way, went to a naval yard auction and bought some memorabilia left over from the Scottish Interlopers' 1907 bankruptcy, including an original copy of the Articles of Confederation, which he thinks confers some magical ability on his part to claim it as abandoned property and use it to create his own magic kingdom in the name of Anyone operating under these delusions is most assuredly not a continental marshal of any kind or stripe, and they will also, most assuredly, be headed for jail. People who don't know who they are and who don't know the solid and logical basis of their authority and who don't understand the jurisdictions of the law, will unavoidably trespass or transgress and they will be arrested. I am telling you all right now that the United States of America has not authorized this oath and is not associated with these people calling themselves Continental Marshals and we are appalled by both the ignorance and the danger these developments represent. Our Continental Marshals Service is not to be confused with any such renegade and foreign effort led by Keith Living Way or associated with him in any way, shape, or form. The same can be said for any other organization attempting to infringe on our patents, trademarks, and copyrights. If it isn't properly organized, if it isn't properly constituted, if it doesn't stand under a true sovereign patent, if its members are not all properly declared as American state nationals while working in international jurisdiction, if they do not hold a proper international commission, if they do not have a badge and ID issued by the United States of America unincorporated, and most importantly, if they are not graduates of a rigorous training program approved by the United States of America, they are not our continental marshals. They may be patriots and they may be well-intentioned, but they are operating as outlaws and they are putting their lives at unnecessary risk by going off half-cocked and claiming to be something that they are not, and in all likelihood, something that they never intended or wanted to be, simply because they don't know what continental marshals are or where they fit in the overall scheme of peacekeeping and law enforcement. To them, it just sounds good, and that is not enough or any excuse or reason for anyone to claim that they are continental marshals when they aren't, and when they are not qualified to be acting in any such capacity. Please help reach out to these people and warn them of their error, just as I attempted to warn the Colorado Nine. Please also spread the word that they are not associated with the United States of America and not associated with our state assemblies, even though they are again using the old, similar names, deceits and calling themselves after our officers and attempting to operate in our names. If there is any confusion about any of this in anyone's mind, it is time to call me and not leave it to your own devices. When you enter international jurisdictions without knowing what you are doing, you're like a white boy fresh off the bus in Harlem. My advice and stern admonition is, recognize what it is you need and where that need obligates you to serve. Most men wishing to support the public law and constitution need to be working at the local level as sheriffs, sheriff's deputies, and members of their assembly's state militia. All of our peacekeepers need to have 1779 declarations at the very least, and to have state national or state citizen political status published and in evidence on some public record, preferably with the State Assembly Recording Secretary, or if that is not yet possible, via the State of State Recorder's Office. 
I fully realize the urgent need to protect innocent people, but that includes those who volunteer as peacekeepers, too. We owe it to them and to ourselves and to the honor of our country, to get this right. Links to Anna's articles and resources can be found in the video description box. If you enjoy having Anna's latest articles made into videos, please consider making a purchase from Ed's website sacredintuitiveelements.com. Thank you.